Hi everybody, it's Lori with Reiki and Wellness broadcasting from my healing space here in Hinsdale tonight for Wellness Wednesday. And um, tonight is a private session night and next week is also a private session night. So if you need a private session, please reach out to me. And I have decided to open it up to phone appointments too. So if you feel like you need something and you don't live nearby, um, Feel free to contact me and we can schedule a phone appointment if that works better for you. And um, always holding space every Wednesday for anyone going through anything challenging. And um, I think especially right now I am holding space to help people ground. I know I need more grounding and I um, walked into the office today and there were more crystals sitting on the desk and it was a really nice surprise because I think by now you understand that I like crystals but they do help you to ground more and they do help you to um, connect to the higher realms better so for me crystals are a big treat to have in the space and the more the merrier so that was my surprise tonight and so I'm setting the intention for grounding tonight. Um, grounding is a way of bringing in all these erratic energies that we might be feeling and grounding them down in through our body and out our feet. So if you imagine that you're kind of like a tree receiving all this higher vibrational energy and you bring it down through your head, down through your heart, down to your knees and down to your feet, right? So we want to plant our feet in the ground to ground and we want to imagine in our mind that we have tree roots growing out of our feet. That's the easiest, fastest way to ground and connect to the earth is, you know, through your imagination. Obviously, whenever our feet are on the ground, it's usually a wood floor or some type of flooring that's buffering us. Um, if you can get to soil or sand or something where you're actually physically touching the earth with your feet, that's much, much better. But um, just visualizing that you're grounding your feet into the earth is very, very grounding for you. And it calms you down almost immediately. So a lot of times people are feeling anxious and that's because they're not grounded. So whenever you're feeling more anxious... Um, work on grounding as much as you can, as fast as you can. Um, sometimes I just place crystals on my knees or at my feet. I um, put them at my feet while I sleep too sometimes. <laughs> and um, I feel much more grounded. I have a more restful night's sleep. And you just feel calmer and more relaxed. And as I've mentioned before, if you feel calm and relaxed, you can actually um, be more effective at whatever you're doing. So I believe um, calming down and relaxing is actually um, you know, more beneficial to you in other ways, like how effective you can be at whatever you're trying to do. It calms your thoughts down so you can think more clearly and um, it's just very important to work on grounding so you can feel less upset, less anxious, and um, feel more collected. Um, it helps you to collect your thoughts, they say, or collect your feelings, just feeling like you're in your body. Um, and I've mentioned in previous videos that when we're upset or anxious, we're actually leaving our body. So like our energy, our soul kind of wants to uh, disconnect from us when we're too upset or um, harming ourselves somehow. Your soul actually doesn't want to be in your body as much. So that's part of the anxiety you're feeling is you don't feel like you can handle whatever's coming at you because your soul kind of left you for a little while and you need to invite it back in. So when you invite your soul, <laughs> I know it sounds weird, when you invite your soul back into your body, the only way it wants to come back in is if you're calming yourself down, if you're creating conditions for it to feel safe in your own body. So it's like you're in charge of how this runs, but you have to create conditions that are conducive for your soul to want to be with you. Um, and then when you do and your soul 
grounds back into your body, you bring it back in, and you create this calm environment for your soul to stay with you in the body, then um, you're much more effective. So when we feel like we're together, that's our soul coming back into our body. When we feel disconnected from things or like we are um, escaping or we can't think, we can't function, that's our soul playing a, a game back and forth with us. Like it comes in, tests the water, it leaves again, you know. So until we create the conditions where it wants to remain grounded in our bodies, um, the soul will kind of come and go as it as it sees fit. Um, and that's for its protection. So your soul is like this much larger part of you. And I'm not saying the entire soul can even fit into our body, but the aspects that we need to be here on earth are, um, you know, joining us for the time that we're on an earth journey, I call it. And um, that part of your soul you need. You need your soul to keep you grounded and you need your soul as a resource to you because whenever you are, you know, as you journey through life, this is the wisdom that you carry. This is the, um, the message, the encoding that you carry into the world. And it's your, you know, it's like how you're functioning in the world. Um, it's your, your battery pack or your energy centers or however you want to think of it. But it's, um, it's your link to the spirit world, but it's also um, how you function in the world here. So um, it's, a, it's a big topic. I'm not going to get into it tonight, actually. But um, just for the point of grounding, I want you to understand what's actually happening is that energetically your soul is taking a trip. It's just like hanging out above you or to the side of you, but it's it's in a place where it feels safer to to be until you can calm yourself down. And um, after you calm yourself down and then your soul comes back into our body, your body, our body, um, then it grounds you further. So once you create the conditions where it would want to hang out with you again, then you'll feel more grounded to have your soul rejoining you. And then you have access to all the resources that your soul can offer you. Um, and again, it's a big topic, but I, I guess that's, that needs to be said. So anyway, when we're upset, we want to ground. When we're feeling extra stressed, we want to ground. When we're feeling um, extra frazzled or crazy, we want to ground. So the answer is always to ground, okay? If when in doubt, just ground. The grounding part will help you uh, receive all the help you need as far as um, from your soul or from your spiritual team. But until you're grounded, until you feel good, you aren't going to feel settled enough to receive any information. You're not going to feel grounded enough to receive any help. You're not going to feel grounded enough to think clearly to process emotions well you're not going to feel calm enough to do any of that until you relax and calm down and um, a major part of that is the grounding process and we don't think of it that way we just think of it as i need to calm down so that's fine that's a great way to think of it but um, what you're really doing is you're calming all of these um, energy centers down and you're grounding them so they can actually operate in harmony with you. So that's the process of grounding. <clears throat> the topic actually tonight is um, how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I guess um, the first part of that message is grounding more. Um, there's a lot of different ways to ground, but like I said, just visualizing yourself um, bringing all the energy in through your head and you know energetically just allowing everything to come back down into your body you want to anchor it all the way through your chakra system to your knees and down to your feet and it's important to feel your feet to think about your feet to say the word foot or feet um, and just imagine 
that your feet are connected to the ground is a very, very easy way to ground. There's also many other grounding activities like washing your dishes or taking a bath or taking a walk. Um, anything that puts you back in your body or has sensation to it is grounding for you. So, um, you know, physically working with your hands, cleaning your house, um, you know, simple things, but those activities are grounding. So you want to just um, work on the grounding aspect of how you're feeling whenever you're going through a lot of changes because um, the more you ground, the more changes you can actually absorb and handle. But if you're not feeling grounded, if you're not um, creating a safe environment for your soul to want to hang out with you and to help you out, then you're not going to be very effective and you're going to have to eventually come to a place where you settle down and you do this anyway. So the sooner you do it, the better because it's going to help you. And it's not always the first thing we think about when we're upset. So you definitely want to work on, um, you know, reminding yourself that you need to ground and just, you know, think of your feet, talk about your feet, um, imagine your feet, walk, walk on your feet. That's an easy way to just kind of um, take notice that you need to ground again. Um, so we've had a lot of energy flares in the universe lately there's been some full moon activity and a solar eclipse and it's been um like some major energies that have been coming forward on the planet and i know a lot of people are reacting to that energy um lately so um collectively we're all going through things and individually we're all going through things so um you know you just want to ground as much as possible. This isn't going to stop. Our planet is moving a little faster than it used to. The energies that come in are higher vibrational energies. Um, we're all shifting to what's known as higher consciousness and um, we're leveling up. So as all of humanity does this, a lot more things um, change and they change quickly. And for us to navigate these changes, we have to work on developing practices and um, systems that assist us in uh, managing our stress and our anxiety around all these changes. And I, all the changes look like ordinary changes that you would um, consider ordinary and extraordinary, you know? So like the pandemic was an extraordinary change that we all went through. Um, war is an extraordinary change that people are going through right now. Um, you know, there could be, I don't wanna scare anybody, but there could be famines or there could be other things, you know, when people have to suffer collectively in like a tsunami or an earthquake or, you know, something else. Those are big collective changes that people are going through. And um, collectively, you know, we are changing. So we have to acknowledge that the world is changing. We're part of the world. And how can we navigate these changes? A lot of us have been um, resisting the changes, which we naturally do do. We don't like change. It's not pleasant. But when, um, you know, the universe is calling on us to make changes, we have to become adaptable to these changes, no matter what they are. And um, the best way to adapt to change is through grounding practices and through meditation and through some kind of connection to nature. Um, and basically just you know, coming back to your body, being back in your body, calming yourself down and um, feeling collected as much as you can during these changes, um, whatever they are. So that's, um, you know, change on a, a larger scale, but, you know, it all, we all change individually in relation to these larger changes and individually in relation to changes that are happening in our own lives. 
So we're always shifting, you know, we're always adapting to something um, new. And I think um, part of that is we have change, changes in our, our identities when these things happen. So when we're faced with changes in the world and or in our personal life, we're also facing changes in our identity. And when you face a change in your identity, it's very, very unnerving. So you've created these definitions of yourself in relation to other people and in relation to yourself. And whenever something major happens in the world or in your life that would alter your identity, that's very, very disruptive to you. It's very disruptive to anybody. So we want to, um, you know, get uncomfortable, get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable about these changes because they're going to keep happening. We're all going to keep evolving. We're all going to change more and more. Um, and we're leveling up into a higher consciousness. And because of that, things are happening more quickly and it's, it's extra uncomfortable. It just is. Um, so I don't know what to say about that. I just want to say that, it, you know, we're all in it together, though. We're all experiencing, you know, different pressures from in any which direction. And that we have to help support each other through these changes because we're all in it together. If you're isolating at home, it doesn't matter because things on the outside have still changed and just because you're separating yourself from from the changes um, you think you're separating yourself from the changes you're not you're still going through these changes it's still affecting the planet it's still affecting the food it's still affecting the water it's still affecting the weather you know all, all these planetary flares and full moons and solar eclipses are doing things to our environment and then when you go to the grocery store to purchase some food, your food has been changed by the changes that the atmosphere created. It's also changed by GMOs and other, you know, scientific helpers that um, we've created. But irregardless, things are changing and you will change with the times and you'll have to roll with the times no matter what, whether you like it or not, because this is happening on a collective level and then it filters into your own life and your personal re reactions and your personal situations and then we also have personal things that happen to us that you know we can't control like for instance when somebody passes away we don't have control over that necessarily and i'm not going to get into every situation some situations somebody did have some control in the situation but for the most part, we have no control when someone passes away and then that creates big shifts in, within us if we're close to them or if we cared about them. And, um, you know, that can rock your world for a long time. But while it's rocking your world, um, you're going through this identity shift and you're trying to get comfortable with the new normal and there is no normal for a while right so you're just in this phase of being very uncomfortable like what do i do now where do i go now who do i talk to now what what can i hold on to now and um you know first of all you got to hold on to yourself and your connection to spirit can really help your connection to god can really help if you don't have a strong foundation in that you know connecting with your loved ones who are still here, connecting with friends and family, and, um, you know, kind of redirecting all the energy that was given to the person who was here and redirecting it to other people can help in the interim. But basically, when things are, when things are in a state of flux, we want to calm down, right? We want to grab onto something. We want to anchor. We want to ground. So um, when you're feeling like your world's in a state of flux, you really need to work on grounding and holding on and anchoring what you can anchor while you can do it. 
It doesn't mean that um, you want to stay in that situation or, or stick to it long term, but you do need to kind of bring all the chaotic energy back down and, and calm down, ground down, and keep doing that as often as you need to. It can be every 10 minutes if you need to. You know, it, de it depends on how upset you are and where things are. When I'm really frustrated and upset, I like to organize. So for me, it's like I'm working with my hands. I'm putting some order in something. And it's like something I can control, you know, when I'm feeling out of control. So I get more organized. And, and it actually helps me calm down. And um, seeing some order in, in an area of anywhere helps me calm down because it makes everything else seem doable. And I don't know why that works for me, but if you function in a similar way, you know, just putting order into something that you can control at the time would help. Um, but basically, we just want to understand that everyone's going through some major changes and major shifts, and that includes us, right? We're part of the bigger picture. We're part of everybody. We're connected to everybody whether we like it or not, and we are all going through things right now. And I feel like when you're going through things, it's best to get support with whatever you're going through and look to people who've been through it before and look for people who you can count on and rely on if your life gets stormy, you know, so you're looking for a port in the storm and, um, you know, and depending on what it is, you want to reach out to somebody who, you know, has been down that road before or might know the terrain or can help you navigate better. Um, and you might have to keep looking for the right people until you find the right people to help you through something like that. I know, um, you know, at different stages of my life, I want advice on different topics and I'll ask around, you know, I'll ask people for advice on things and it might take a while before I hit the jackpot and I get the right advice on the topic that would work for me, you know, but I keep looking, I keep asking people, I keep asking the questions, I keep searching and I get to the point where I finally find the answers, but you keep looking, you keep searching, you keep finding who helps you out, who you feel good around, how they um, can help you get through the challenge that you're facing right now. And um, if it's not a person, it could be, you know, a YouTube video, it could be a library book, it could be, you know, a source outside of another person. But um, you basically are searching for some answers to your issues and your challenges. So I encourage you to keep looking and to keep um, finding ways to ground and anchor and understand and build a relationship to the new circumstances that have been happening for you or collectively. Like I like to read about um, what's going on collectively and that helps me feel a little more comfortable with what's about to happen or what has been happening or um, looking for ways to uh, meet the challenges that are in front of us. So that's a little food for thought tonight. I think this video ran a little long. I apologize, but I hope you're doing well. If you need anything, please reach out. I am grounding a lot tonight. I feel like I'm doing a lot better since even a week ago. And I've been focusing on, you know, getting things together and grounding in my own life. And I extend the same, um, uh, I guess advice to you. Have a good night. Take care.